Good morning, class 9 children. Welcome back. Today is business day and as per your new routine, you have English literature to continue. Hope you all are safe and fine at home. You are carrying on with your uh, regular duties of uh, revising the taught lessons, working on your home task and uh, also preparing for the online test. So today let us again carry on uh, with uh, our treasure trove. In our last uh, online class we completed a poem, uh, The Bangal Sadars, written by Sarazini Naidu. Uh, you have passed on the notes on the poem. Hope you have uh, written uh, the notes in your uh, poetry exercise note. You were also given some work as homework. Hope you have uh, found out the answers to those questions. Today, uh, without wasting much time uh, to introduce what we are going to do, uh, we'll take up uh, the story section. Uh, what is story we are going to take today is a very very uh, interesting one it's a very very beautiful chapter uh, the chapter talks about a poor life uh, who live in this world who exist in this world and uh, the author has uh, given us a moral what is our duty towards such poor people right so this is a very very beautiful story uh, let us see what the story is and uh, try to understand to know what uh, the author is uh, trying to um, tell us with the help of this story so let us see the content so in the content uh, just now we discussed what the story is about uh, so the story is uh, the last chapter for you in the class 9 session so that is chapter number 6 an angel in disguise written by T.S. Arthur so let us uh, now take the page 76 and see uh, in short uh, first the writer's introduction and then we'll move on to the story so the full name of uh, T.S. Arthur T S T stands for Timothy and S stands for Say. Timothy Say Arthur is the full name of the author. The great author Timothy Say was born on 6th June in the year 1809 in New York in the USA. And he died on 6th March in the year 1885. The great author T.S. Arthur was a popular 19th century American author on both uh, fiction and non-fiction works. His, uh, writer, uh, his writings do contain compassion and uh, sensitivity in uh, his works and that is why he is uh, uh, so famous. Uh, it is uh, he uh, who has uh, helped to demonize alcohol in America, basically in the middle class in America. You know what happens when uh, the people take to alcoholism, right? It uh, finishes everything. The health is gone, money is gone, property is gone relationship is gone so this is a, a you can see a ruinous of everything when a person takes to alcoholism right or uh, uh, he becomes an uh, um, you can say a heavy drunkard right the author T.S. Arthur has uh, opened up the eyes of those people uh, who are tilted towards drinking liquor and so he tries to, uh, he tried to, um, I mean, uh, demonize 
alcohol in America. Right? So he is a well known author on morals. Whatever stories he has given to the world, uh, there is a moral taught in his writings. Right? And today's chapter that uh, we are going to use in our syllabus uh, is based on uh, poor life. The story portrays uh, uh, compassion and uh, uh, love for the poor. Right? That's what he's going to tell us in this story. So this story is An Angel in Disguise. It's a beautiful chapter, though a little long as compared to the other uh, chapters we uh, finished in our uh, uh, syllabus through our nine classes. So I want you to uh, pay full attention uh, to this story because this is a very beautiful story written by Timothy Say Arthur. Right? So let's begin what this story is about now. An angel in disguise. First of all, let us define the topic an angel in disguise. Now, who is called an angel? Right? Uh, an angel is a spiritual uh, being who is an agent to the God or he is a messenger to the God. Normally you see an angel in the human form, human shape and has wings, right? Uh, but this is what we see in the pictures, right? So the story is based on an angel, right? And here the angel is in disguise. Disguise means it is a personated character, right? It's a made up character, right? A person who comes in a different appearance is called dis disguise. You have a disguise competition in the schools, right? Disguise competition means a fancy dress competition where you see uh, an individual comes in a different look, wearing a different attire, right? In order to give a different uh, look of that, uh, what he has come for. Right? That is called disguise. Right? So here, uh, God has sent his men, an angel, in the disguise look. In the look that is not normally what he is. Right? Uh, and it, as it is normally said, God uh, comes to take uh, the examination of the people uh, in different ships and different looks. And uh, it is the people who has to understand uh, uh, who uh, the person has come at your door. Sometimes the God do uh, visits uh, our house in the um, in the look of a beggar, in the look of a poor man, asking alms at your, at uh, the doors. Right now, they are the people who are to uh, be very much uh, compassion to these people because who knows who has come to your house, right? So the God also takes part in disguise competition, right? The God also takes part in fancy dress competition, coming in different looks in order to test the people, right? So likewise is the story an angel in disguise, right? So once again I say this is a beautiful story, a simple story written by uh, a very famous author, T.S. Arthur. So here we begin. An angel in disguise by T.S. Arthur. So this is a long story, so let us try to uh, see how much we can today and whatever is left we will again take in the next part uh, when we meet again in our uh, English online class again, right? So see, the story begins. Idleness, vice and intemperance had done their miserable work. So idleness, idleness means laziness, the person who is lazy, right? Vice, vice means bad habits or evil habits right and intemperance intemperance means where there is lack of moderation right had done their miserable work so these three have done their sad work now what is this sad work see and the dead mother lay cold and still amid her wretched children right the sad work done by these three laziness vice and intemperance is we see a death of a lady we see a death of a mother right here the dead mother is an unnamed character her name is not mentioned in the story 
सो इज एन अननेम कैरेक्टर राइट सी ले कोल्ड एन स्टिल सो कोल्ड एन स्टिल मीन्स ले कोल्ड एन स्टिल मीन्स सी इज डेड राइट अमिड अमिड मीन्स इन द मिडल ऑफ इन द सेंटर ऑफ अर रेच चिल्ड्रेन रेड मीन्स रेच यू मीन्स वेरी सैड चिल्ड्रेन पुअर चिल्ड्रेन सैड चिल्ड्रेन राइट शी हैड फॉलन अपॉन द थ्रेस होल्ड ऑफ अर ओन डोर सो सी वट हैज वट हैज हैपन टू हर द मदर वेन सी वॉज अबाउट टू रीच टूर होम वेन शी हेज रीच द थ्रेस होल्ड थ्रेस होल्ड मीन्स द एंट्रेंस ऑफ द हाउस द मेन डोर ऑफ द हाउस वेन शी हेज जस्ट रीच देर सी फेल डाउन डेड राइट इन अ ड्रंक एंड फिट एंड वॉट इज द रीजन ऑफ अर दैट सी वॉज हेवली ड्रंक राइट शी हेज टेकन एक्सेसिव एल्कोहल राइट so the excessive use of alcohol is called drunken fit she died because of excessive drinks right she is an alcoholic lady right she is the mother do the mother of the children right and died in the presence of her frightened little ones so she died right uh, at the threshold right in the presence of her uh, afraid little ones afraid children right so the three things have done right uh they work they sad work on this mother right laziness bad habit and lack of moderation has uh, killed right uh, a mother right who has uh, poor right issues poor children she died at the uh, falling uh, at the entrance of her house because of excessive drinks that she has drunk right so see that touches the spring of our common humanity so whenever we hear that right we always feel sorry for the person who has died right so it's common for everybody right to hear the death of anyone right even if uh, a person who is an enemy uh, to you and uh, you hear that uh, the person is dead right you feel sorry for the person right so this is a common uh, thing for everyone is a common factor for everyone right uh, whenever you hear the death of anyone you feel sorry for right so see this woman had been despised scoffed at and angrily denounced by nearly every man woman and child in the village now you see right so this woman who is this woman the woman who died when she reached her home so see this woman has been despised so this woman has been hated she has been regarded worthless she has been uh, regarded regardless right by all the people living in the village where she lived right she was scoffed at scoffed at means she was mocked she was teased she was met fun of whenever she was seen walking on the road right the people make fun of her right and angrily denounced and people angrily denounced denounced means you criticized condemned right the people criticize on seeing her right saying this saying that about her right by nearly every man so whoever man has seen this woman right the woman who is dead in the opening of the story when she was alive right she was hated by all people even women did not like her they used to hate her right and child in the village even the small children used to tease her they used to make fun of her perhaps this woman was always found drinking and whenever uh, she used to walk on the road the dirt here was there as he walked right so the children used to mock at her make fun of her right but now but today when she died right as the fact of her death was passed from lip to lip so whenever or when uh, she died the death news spread among the village people right there's no so her death was passed from lip to lip that means her death news right became uh, the news for every people living uh, in the vicinity living in the surrounding right in subdued tones however they showed they told one to another in a very low tone right because uh, when she was alive you know how she was right and how the people uh used to regard her they never used to uh uh care her they never used to uh, like her they always like okay, have uh, uh uh you can say uh, criticize her right such as the woman but on hearing the death of this poor woman now it became a hot news for everybody right 
pity took the place of anger right so as soon as the people heard about this lady's death this woman's death right they felt pity pity means they felt sad they felt compassion on hearing this right who was actually a cause of anger to the people the people used to get angry on seeing her right and sorrow of denunciation and there was sadness right expressed on such criticism denunciation means criticism when the people used to criticize when she was alive right the very woman when she died now the people felt uh, compassion on her the people felt sorrow on her the people felt the people felt sad on listening to this news right neighbors went hastily hastily means quickly on hearing the news that the woman died right at the threshold of her house the neighbors living around the house they ran to see her right see the death quickly to the old tumble down hut and how the house was where this woman lived with the children it was a tumble down hut tumble down means already broken right it was almost broken house right it was not even a house it was a hut it was a shanty right in which she had secured little more than a place of shelter from summer heats and winter cold however this hut where she lived along with the children right it was uh, uh, a house for them because at least it used to uh, give shelter right for, uh, to them against the uh, prickly heat of the sun on summer days and uh, uh, the cold wintry months right it used to provide a shelter for this family right some with grave cloth so some neighbors would come to see the death carrying the grave cloth grave cloth is the white sheet right this is called the shroud on uh, uh, covering the dead body right for a decent interment interment uh, interment of the body right so interment interment is burial this uh, shroud was brought this white piece of cloth was brought in order to cover her dead body so as to uh, Uh, be taken to the cremation place or cremation yard where she would be buried right and some with food for the half starving children three in number and some brought right food for the half starving children those children who haven't uh, eaten food right for the hours for days right it's called starving right and uh, there were three in number that means there were three children in the house there were three issues of this uh, dead mother right of these who were these three children of these john the oldest john was the eldest of the three children a boy of 12 and his age was 12 years old he was a stout lad but he was a strongly built right boy a stout lad means strongly built boy physically uh, fit boy right able to earn his living with any farmer right and he was a, a strong boy in the look that if he is taken to uh, work in the field he would uh, um i mean okay easily do it right so he can be a use for any farmer right to work in the field uh, kate uh, between 10 and 11 and the next child was kate she was a daughter she was in between 10 to 11 years old was bright so she was a very bright active girl right an active girl right out of whom something clever might be made if in good hands so if kate is gone to Uh, a good house right in a good family she can be of a good use in the house right to work as a maid or to help in the family she can be uh, a good use in the house right that sort of girl was kate who was uh, who was uh, 10 to 11 years old right but poor little maggie but the third one who was called maggie the youngest right was hopelessly diseased but she was a diseased child the youngest maggie was a diseased child she was not fit and fine right she was suffering right she was an ailing child right so the three of them we got introduced the three children got introduced to us the eldest among the three was john he was uh, 12 years old a strong a uh, strongly built lad right the next was kate she was an active girl a bright girl right and the third was maggie right she was a diseased child right two years before a fall from a window had injured her spine and she had not been able to leave her bed since except when lifted in the arms of her mother right so what actually had happened to maggie 
she perhaps was kept on the window sill by her mother right when she was just uh, see two years before right so it's an incident that took place two years before of the mother's death right that uh, the child was kept on the window sill right and mother might have gone in the room right or inside the room to do some work meanwhile right the child fell down from the window right and uh, the fall had broken her spinal cord right now after that she was completely bedridden she was not able to get up from the bed so she was a diseased child right if she is to move somewhere right she used to be carried in the arms of her mother in the arms of her dead mother right that was how she used to uh, be shifted she used to be moved right but now that mother is also dead now who is going to take care of this disease child it is a big question for everybody right so you saw three of the children john kate and maggie right john was a fine lad right kate was also as good as john but the sufferer was maggie the youngest right daughter at home right she was right now a handicap she was not able to leave her bed right she was always right uh, bedridden if she is to move somebody will have to carry her in right uh, their arm such is the problem with the child right now see what is to be done with the children so when the people the neighbors have come uh, hearing the news of the dead mother right they brought something or the other in order to help this family right now what happened what is to be done with the children that was the chief question now so everybody had the main question marks chief means most important question marks what is to be done with the children since right father's address is not known to us right the mother who was taking care of these three children right today she is dead now who will take care of these three children right right now see the dead mother would go underground that means the dead mother will be now buried she will be buried as per the custom right uh, in the christianity a dead body is buried right she would also be buried now right today or the as next she will be buried and be forever beyond all care of concern or concern of the villagers after she is buried right there after okay she will be of no concern because uh, uh, for a few days the people will talk about the person and after that everybody is uh, busy right so the person will vanish from the mind okay so likewise the dead mother will be unconcerned thereafter when she labor is right but the children must not be left to starve but the question was the children should not be let to die because of hunger right so dying because of hunger is called starvation right so they did not want these three children to give up their life in want of food now somebody will have to take care of them right so see after considering the matter so after discussing this matter what is to be done right and talking it over with his wife farmer jones said that he would take john right so amongst the villagers right the neighbors who have come here in this death ceremony right to cremate the dead body of the disease, uh, of the dead mother right uh, there was one person who was farmer jones right he uh, uh, had a talk with his wife right and volunteered that he would take john with him so i'll take the responsibility responsibility of uh, john farmer jones said okay and do well by him and i'll Uh, support him i'll take care of him right i'll uh, nurture him he said uh, before everybody now that his <coughs> mother was out of his out of the way because now his mother is now no more to look after right she is already dead so i'll take the responsibility of uh, taking care of john farmer jones said uh, uh, this to everybody present over there right and mrs ellis who had been looking out for a bound girl concluded that it would be charitable in a to make choice of kitty right now the another lady also volunteered she also came forward right with her decision who was mrs ellis right 
and she perhaps was looking for a bound girl. Right, bound girl, he is a maid. She was wanting to have a maid at her home. A maid uh, who would not be given the monthly salary. But uh, the maid will be living uh, with the family in the same house. Right, working for them. Such is called a bound girl. Right, the bound girl will not be receiving her monthly salary. But she will be eating and living on the charitable, uh, uh, you can say, hand of the family. Right, so Mrs. Ellis was right on uh, in a search of uh, a bound girl. Now, when she saw Kate, right, she um, decided that she would be doing a charity on taking Kate with her in her home, right. So, Katie, she called Kate Katie, Katie and Katie C, right. Even though she was too young to be of much use for several years, though here Kate was just 10 to 11 years old. Uh, even if you want to uh, take her as a uh, bound girl or make her maid at home, right? She is too young to carry on with this, right? Uh, work, right? So Mrs. Ellis will have to at least uh, wait for uh, some years so that uh, Kate would be grow up to a um, girl and uh, she would understand her own responsibility working for the house, right? So Mrs. Ellis volunteered to take Kate. So two of the children are now being, uh, you can say, uh, taken by um, uh, Mr. or uh, Farmer Jones and Mrs. Ellis. Okay, now the question comes on Mike. Now you see, I could do much better, I know, said Mrs. Ellis. So Mrs. Ellis says she knows much better that's what she is going to do. That means he has taken the responsibility of taking Kate, right? But as no one seems inclined to take her, but nobody seemed to uh, in, uh, to take uh, Kate, right? Inclined means nobody was bending on, nobody was uh, inclined to take uh, Kate. So uh, Mrs. Ellis decided that she would take her. Okay. So I must act from a sense of duty. Expect to have trouble with the child, for she is an under undisciplined thing, used to having her own way, right? Mrs. Ellis, she knows that Kate is an undisciplined child because. Uh, uh, she is uh, um, uh, there at home being taken care by her mother and the mother was also a drunkard, right? Uh, but she hopes, she anticipates that uh, in the next uh, uh, um, few months, right, uh, she would be uh, corrected, right? If she is in this spring as a child, she would be corrected when she would be taken uh, to her home. So she volunteered. Mrs. Ellis volunteered that she would be taking Kate at her own risk, right? Now see, but no one said I'll take Maggie, but nobody volunteered, nobody came forward, right, to take Maggie, right? Now that was a big issue, that was a big problem for everybody out there, right? John is being taken, Kate is also being taken, now lies, Maggie, what is to be done? And nobody got ready to take her. Pitying glances were cast on her, wan and wasted form, and thoughts were troubled on her account. So pitying glances. So those people who had come here, right, they uh, looked at her, right, very sadly. Pitying glances means to look at somebody with your sad eyes, right, feeling sorry for them, right. You have a, a sorrowed heart to look at uh, the poor condition, you see. So pitying glances were cast on her, wan, wan means pale looking. Maggie looked pale, right? She looked yellowish and wasted form. Wasted form is she was injured, she was handicapped, she was not able to uh, uh, walk like a normal man or normal child. And thoughts were troubled on her account, and that's why every people right now uh, looked, gave a glance, but uh, nobody desired to take her. Okay, mothers brought cast of garments. So some mothers living in the neighborhood they brought thrown away cloths for this poor children, right, cast stock means thrown away. Their children who were once using those cloths, now uh, their children have grown up, so those cloths were now unfitted for them. That means they are too small uh, for their children to use. So those cloths were brought for them, for these three children, right. They said removing her soiled and rag cloths, so they removed her soiled for means dirty and rag means torn, torn cloths that uh, Maggie was wearing, right. So uh, her uh, soiled and uh, uh, tattered cloths, rag cloths were replaced by the other cloths that the mothers did bring. 
that the uh, neighborhood uh, women had brought. Okay, dressed her in clean attire. So they dressed Maggie in a neat and clean cloth that they had brought for her. Right. The sad eyes and patient face of the little one touched many hearts. Right. She looked very sad, a child, Maggie. Right. She was handicapped. She was. Uh, uh, she was a diseased child, so everybody had a very, very sad eye to look at her, right? So that uh, touched their hearts, that felt their hearts, right? And even knocked at them for entrance, right? But none opened to take her in, right? So looking at her, right now, they felt pity. But nobody, right now, volunteered to say that I will take the child, right, under my care. Nobody said this, right? Who wanted a bedridden child? After everybody had the same question. Who is wanting to take this bedridden child? Right? Who will take this problem at home? Because when you take this child Maggie at your house, you have to nurture her. You have to take care of her. You have to sit in, uh, by the side uh, uh, of her all times. Right? So who is wanting to take the bedridden child? Nobody want to. Right? So the people who saw her, they looked at her and then felt pity. But nobody desired to take her. Right? Because nobody wants to take the burden home. Nobody is wanting to take the problem to their house. Because taking Maggie to their home means bringing a problem. Taking a problem. Right? Take her to the poor house, said a rough man, of whom the question, what is to be done with Maggie, was asked. Now you see, so somebody or many people there, okay, asked, what is to be done with Maggie? Right? So some, okay, spoke. Right now, a rough man said, Right? Take her to the poor house. Now what is poor house? Poor house is an alms house. That means uh, in today's term it is called orphanage. Right? Uh, which is uh, worked on uh, public funds or uh, uh, government funds or uh, um, any missionary funds. Right? That will uh, uh, take care of these houses. Right? So a rough man here uh, uh, said, right? Gave a uh, um, you can say solution what is to be done with Maggie, right? So Maggie should be taken to a poor house. Let her go to the orphanage, right? Nobody is going to be bothered with her because nobody was wanting to, right, uh, take care of her. Nobody, is, nobody seemed here to bother Maggie, right? What is to be done with her? So ultimately, a decision was taken, right? That she should be taken to the poor house. She should be taken to the arms house where she would be taken care right in this orphanage the poor house is a sad place for a sick and helpless child answered one but one person out there he said the poor house is a sad place for the sick and helpless child right so would it be fine to take her there would it be fine to take maggie out there right somebody said for your child or mine said the other lightly speaking right then the other person said right it is uh, uh, a poor house, right, uh, would be a sad place and uh, okay for the person, right, if our children would go there, right, for your child and my child, right, if the child is taken to a poor house, then it would be a sad place for the child to live in. It would be a, uh, it would be a, uh, a difficult place for our children to live in there, right, but you see, but for its brat, it will prove a blessed change. But if the child is a spoiled child, right means spoiled child, right? A child is spoiled, right? If he's taken to an orphanage, if it is, if he or she is taken to a poor house, that will be a great change, right? In the child's life, right? But for our children, who is habituated living with the facility in our house, yeah? So our children can't adjust in the poor house because they are used to with the facilities that uh, we provide. Right, but the poor child who is already spoiled one, right, and if it finds a place in a poor house, that will be right a heaven for them. Okay, so see, she will be kept clean. So what will be Maggie doing out there? Right, so Maggie in the poor house, if taken to, she will be kept clean, kept clean there, have healthy food. She will be provided healthy food to eat, right, and be doctored. Doctor will come to check uh, time to time in the poor house, which is more than she said of her past condition so which would be more right than they're living a better life in the poor house than she's living here in this small hut right so the people unanimously uh, uh, 
uh, chit chatted right over the problem right over the existing problem of Maggie that she is a diseased child right uh, the best place for her to be taken is a poor house there is no alternative right as nobody was volunteering to take uh, Maggie uh, to their home right so uh, the best place for Maggie would be taken to a poor house okay now what will happen right uh, amongst these people who are uh, chit chatting over the problem of uh, Maggie and her uh, um, being handicapped right will there be a person raising the hand that uh, I would be taking I will volunteer right uh, to take her home or who is going to take uh, uh, Maggie to poor house if the reason is taken unanimously by all that she should be taken to the poor house right the remaining portion of the story I feel better we'll take it in our next sitting I hope it is clear the starting of this story is a beautiful story written by Thomas uh, I mean Timothy say Arthur right so keep revising till thought and uh, what happens more in this story we'll again continue in our next sitting thank you very much